All right. Well, hello, everyone. Good morning. Welcome into our budgeting session for 2024. Uh, my name is Amanda. I'm going to be going through everything today. All right. So um, we are starting on the wiki. Uh, I'm going to go, we're going to go look at our documentation pages, and then we're going to talk through a couple different uh, scenarios here. So the first place I'm going to go is our USAS documentation. And then let's go to our budgeting page. So, you know, it's interesting because when I come in here <laughs> and if you see a lot of the starts of my trainings, I'm always like hopping in the wiki and looking at things for budgeting. I feel like this one is like extra important because um, when I'm gonna go here, what I'm gonna do is click right on the budgeting page instead of expanding it down. Oops, <laughs> sorry, Michelle, I think I clicked your name. <laughs> um, so, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come to the main budgeting page. So we can see you have scenarios and proposed amounts under here, which is what you would see on the menu for um, like in the software. But if we click right on this budgeting page, this is what I wanna look at. Because what we're going to talk through today is going to include a couple different pages, but overall that budgeting is a full process. So um, the information that we start with here is going to be really helpful in sort of putting those steps together. The first page we're going to take a look at and talk about is the scenarios. So this allows for the creation of budget scenarios via spreadsheets, which can then be promoted to the proposed amounts. And um, we're going to look at when I say spreadsheets, there are a couple different options. There's a way to generate that within the software, um, or you can sort of start with a spreadsheet. So we'll talk about those options. And then those move to the proposed amounts, which shows the proposed budget and revenue for a specified year in a grid format. And then um, from there, there's another step to actually apply those amounts um, as the initial budget and revenue estimates for. Uh, the next year. And then we have this nice green box at the bottom. And this is really where this is important because um, this uh, budgeting scenario steps, we have walkthroughs that put the pieces of these pages together. And so um, when you're working on your budget, when your district's working on their budget, like these are the steps that, um, that I would suggest referring to for these processes. So what we're gonna do is um, I'm gonna start, uh, I, I have a click here for making budget adjustments in the current fiscal year. So our first example, we're gonna do this. We're gonna talk about adjustments in the current year. And then we're gonna go talk about proposed amounts for the next year. We did this, uh, we, we did this similar format last year. And if I recall correctly, I think we spent quite a bit of time on the adjustments part and then the proposed amounts, we kind of, you know, we ran through that, but it was quicker. So what I'm going to try and do, I'm going to try it a little bit different this year. I'm still going to go through this process and talk about budget adjustments, but I think we're going to save some of the details of like some of the things that we're seeing. Um, and I'm going to try and touch more on those when we look at it as far as like a next year proposed process. So, uh, the process is very similar, so this will be a little bit repetitive, but I'm hoping that that may also help. And, you know, sometimes seeing it multiple times uh, can be really helpful. I also realized that I jumped right in here today on a Friday. And um, I do just want to say, as we go through these steps, if you have questions, I have my chat open. Please feel free to put your questions in the chat um, or unmute and uh, chime in if, if you feel comfortable doing so. Okay, so let's jump in. So the first one, budgeting scenario steps for making budget adjustments in the current fiscal year. And what's really nice about these walkthroughs is it's gonna give you the step-by-step. -step. So here's a little summary that we talked about for these pages. There's more detail from like a manual perspective on like the actual scenario and proposed amounts pages. So if you're looking for specifics on like a part of the process, those can still definitely be helpful to reference. Uh, but this is more of like a walkthrough. Okay, we're going to click on this. We're going to go here. So let's do that. Get ourselves logged in. Okay. 
All right, so where we're going, so now we have on our menu up here, we have our budgeting and then we have scenarios. So we're gonna start here. And what we're gonna see in this grid is we're gonna see any scenarios that have already been created for the district. This could be past years. Um, in this case, we're talking about adjustments for 2024. So um, any of these scenarios that we have, if we were to view them, you can see there's a clone option up here. So if it made sense for the situation, certainly like one of these can be cloned and then modified. And um, that would allow, you know, maybe an easier way. Now we're talking about adjustments in this case. So it really just depends on the situation of like what kind of adjustments, how many accounts we're talking about. Um, Definitely, there's a case where they may just go into the account itself and enter a budget, uh, like a budget adjustment so that it's uh, just updating on just that one budget. But if there's like a group of accounts that need budget adjustments, this can be a little bit easier because then you don't have to click through every single account and make the update. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at creating one from scratch. And here's we, where we want to do... Adjustments 2024, this is my description. And these fields right here, by name and description, directly impact what's gonna show in my grid here. So like this description is helpful for like, you know, my future reference of what is this scenario gonna be for. Fiscal year, this, okay, so I'm making my adjustments to the current fiscal year. I want to be very careful with the dates in when I make this scenario. So we want to change that to 2024. And I'm kind of zoomed in here. So yeah, we'll leave it this way. And then what we're looking at down here is there's a section for budgeting sheets. And so when we said the scenarios, you know, you can update amounts um, with spreadsheets. We have a couple of different options and this is where we're going to display like any of the spreadsheets that we kind of have as a collection within our scenario. All of the updates that we're going to push forward like for the year at the same time, basically what we want to apply together is all going to be in the same scenario. And another thing I, I give this tip every year and then sometimes I demonstrate not doing it. So one thing is, um, this saving this, you can save this and then edit it like along the way, uh, especially once we add budgeting sheets. Like if we create a budgeting sheet, sometimes it does help to save. If you forget to save and then click out of this and like you've added a sheet since you saved before, like it is possible to lose that sheet. So that's a tip that I like is just kind of trying to remind myself to save along the way just so you don't accidentally lose anything. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to um, go ahead and create a budgeting sheet. And, okay, so we'll talk about some other examples on this page. What I'm going to do here is just talk about what we're seeing. Um, the first thing that's really important is select type. And this up here is going to determine, is our budgeting sheet looking at a budget? Is it looking at expenditure accounts? or if we choose anticipated revenue, it's gonna look at revenue accounts. So just right there based on what we pick is gonna determine which type of account my sheet is gonna pull in. So for this example, we'll stick with budget. I'm gonna give this sheet a name and this is how it's gonna look in my mini grid. This is gonna be kind of what we get to reference it as there. For select properties, this is going to determine what the columns are on our spreadsheet, on our budgeting sheet that we're creating. So um, all of these things as far as like the um, account type or the account uh, codes. And then we have some figures down here uh, related to like the account figures, the account totals. We can definitely move these around or delete things if we don't need them. Like say, I don't need the encumbrance. I can take that off of there. We'll look at another example when we get into uh, the current year, like the next year budgeting rather. Configure filters. This is where we're gonna determine. Okay, so our first tab was what columns are we looking at? What are the columns when I have the spreadsheet? 
the configure filter to saying, well, what accounts are going to be in those columns? Because like, I don't want it for all accounts ever in my, in my instance, I'm going to make it for a certain subset of, of account codes. So uh, let's first go to active and let's say we only want the active account. So equals true. And then we are going to use a filter on, let's see, a function. And for this one, I want to use wildcard. So I'm going to use the like operation. Um, th this works similar to how your advanced query would work as far as using the operation, um, uh, adding filters to uh, reports. Like if you um, have done any you of know, like the custom report definitions, like this uh, view works similar to that. So what we're going to do, let's say starts with 28. And there we go. Okay. Okay. Uh, so that's everything that I want in there. So um, I'm actually going to go right up here, save sheet. And it's going to give me a little pop up. So we did narrow this down to like a certain um, group of account codes, but you know, sometimes those can be like a pretty big group. So it gives me a little warning and just says creation of a new budgeting sheet will run in the background. It may take several minutes. You can continue working in another browser tab while this process completes. So there is a possibility and it really depends on like what those filters may be of this could take um, an extra bit of time here. I'm pretty sure when I tested this one, it goes pretty fast. Yeah. Okay. So budgeting sheet creation successful. This is a part, uh, this is a part where I'm just going to go ahead and do a little save here. And again, you don't have to do this. This is me being like, especially when I'm doing a training, I might, um, <laughs> do a oops click so I don't want us to do it again that can be helpful for like if your district is um you know if they do this process and maybe they you know are like coming in and out of here like they're walking away I know people get busy someone comes into the office so like that's why I feel like that's a good tip um okay so but then I just click edit again and I'm right back where I was and if I wanted to go ahead and still add more like sheets on here, like say I have one for transportation, I have one for another department, like I have a whole list of uh, different sheets on here, I could do that. Okay, I do want to talk a little bit about the buttons that we're seeing here though. We have um, this first one is an edit. And let's go look at this. So this is where, and this is where, um, and again, I'm going to try not to get too far ahead, but I want to talk a little bit about like the, um, my thoughts behind this is when we say the scenarios, um, you can make the scenarios with spreadsheets. So again, there's that upload option, which um, we'll talk about, but like really, even if you're not creating like a separate spreadsheet outside the software and pulling it in, like this option, you're still kind of making this spreadsheet that you can see in the software. So I don't have to pull it out to Excel. So um, so I clicked edit and what I can see here is here's all the columns. These were all the columns that I saw when I was creating that sheet. And then here's my totals. Um, and then one thing I wanna do. So remember I said the dates are gonna be really important here. Um, now based on your current year, like it's going to say, oh, you're probably like, you're most likely to be budgeting for the next year. So it goes ahead and puts in the next year date. In this case, we are doing the current year correction. So we want to change this. So that's our first step. Make sure that this is the proposed amount PA column is for the year that we want it to be. Now, the next thing that we can do in here is if we have certain accounts that we know we want to have adjustments for. So we're looking at this first account and we say, OK, um, you know, maybe that's one we could go ahead and put in what we want the proposed amount to be. Uh, and we could go through and we could enter these manually. And I'm just making up figures, right? So we could do that. Or you can use um you can use 
like Excel, you can we can use an equals, and then we can make this equal to another field. So like in this case, we have our expended. So if I want it to equal, like say my, I want my budget to be exactly what's expended because I don't want anything to be left, then I can equal the expended. And um, if I drag this down, it would go ahead and it would bring that amount, uh, you know, kind of like Excel. When you drag it down, it'll populate that same formula to the other columns. So that's another option just as far as filling that. As far as what numbers you want to put in there, like, I mean, obviously it's going to be like the adjustment is going to depend on, you know, what their goal is, what they're trying to do. But what we want to think about is if they go into an account and they're entering a budget adjustment, they're entering the amount that they want to adjust by. So that's like if you're entering it directly to the account. When you're in here and you're doing it this way, what this column represents is a proposed amount. So this is how I think about it. It's what you're proposing the expendable amount to be. So I'm not entering the amount of the adjustment. Um, I'm entering what I want my, my ended like appropriated amount to be. And then what it's going to do is it's going to go look at the initial budget and then it's going to look at the difference and any adjustments that already exist and it's going to look at the difference between that amount and what you've entered and it'll manual it'll figure out automatically what the actual like adjustment amount should be so what you're putting in is you're putting in what you want the expendable total to be what you're proposing for the amount <laughs> all right all right, so that's updating like within. And what I could do here is I could go ahead and I could say accept, and then that saves it. And now my figures are saved within the sheet without having to go to Excel or anything. They hear, did someone have a question? Make sure my volume's up. Um, so uh, so the next option we have here is regenerate, regenerate sheet. And if we use this option, what we're gonna see here is we're it's gonna take us back to this view like when we were creating the sheet. And so what this would basically do is refresh all of our information that we pulled the first time. If we do this, if we um, go ahead and do this, it is going to overwrite like anything that we've manually updated in that sheet. So if we didn't, like we did that edit already, um, if we do the regenerate, then it's going to reset this. So we'd have to come in here, just make sure we have the right date. Any totals that we have would have been wiped out because we regenerate, we, we basically started that sheet fresh. The benefit of this though is um, if you remember, one of the filters we put on here was that we only wanted active accounts. So say I did this and I looked at this sheet and I'm like, man, there's a bunch of accounts in here that actually should have been inactive. So I went and made them inactive in my account grid. And then regenerating is how I would get them out of this sheet. I would basically reapply those filters and repull it. So that can be really helpful. Um, we're going to come back and talk about that option a little bit more, too, when we talk about the uh, the next year budgeting scenario. Now, these two buttons work together. So we have a download and we have upload and replace. And uh, we're going to we'll go ahead and download one. So we're just going to download this sheet and this is where we're taking it to Excel. And um. Okay, and then we'll talk about this last one real quick because this is a delete. So this would just remove the sheet um, from my budgeting scenario, from my little mini grid here. So let's open this up. Take a second to load here.
boy oh there we go okay all right enable editing so here's what we're looking at it's the same thing we were looking at before um in that edit mode but now we have it in excel and like you know there definitely is times where this may make sense because um I'm trying to get it to zoom in here there we go because, you know, like, I know that um, when they're budgeting, I mean, with adjustments, like, maybe this, I could see it going either way. Um, but especially when we start talking about, like, the next year budgets, like, I totally understand maybe wanting to take these to Excel so they can put them in some other kind of format to be able to disperse them to their buildings. It definitely depends on their budgeting process and, like, how they work with um, their buildings and departments to collect, like, what the budgets are going to be. Um We'd want to do the same thing here. So we'd want to go ahead and make sure our date is correct. And um, then we can go through and we could enter any figures that we wanted in here. Now, the other thing we can do. So um, for this example, what I'm going to do is let's just like take out some of these extra accounts just so we can see pretty easily what the difference would be when we bring this back in. So all I'm doing, I just have my first three um, accounts. I just deleted all of the other rows there. And let's save that. So now we're looking at our three accounts that we want to have the adjustments for. And when I come back to the software, I have a couple options now. So one thing I can do is I can upload and replace this. So if I do, so let's see. Okay, hang on. Let me, we're going to try and do this. I want to show a couple different things. Okay. So I click the upload button. It says, warning, this operation will overwrite the existing sheet. Replace the existing sheet. Yes. And when I'm in here, I can go ahead and choose my file. Got to find it real quick. Okay. And then I'm going to click start upload. File uploaded. Excellent. Okay. And then if I use this edit icon to look at this, we can see this did. It replaced what we had here. And now we have this sheet that just has the three with the amounts that I updated. So like... I don't know that you would ever do it that drastically where you just delete everything, but like, say you generated that sheet and then there's like a couple in there that they don't want, you know, like they're just doing adjustments to certain accounts. So they, so they go through their spreadsheet and they add certain amounts and then they delete some rows. And so basically like whatever rows that they would have deleted when they're modifying it in Excel, when they pull it back in here, they're not going to have those rows in here either. Um, all right. So those are our adjustments. Now, the other thing that we have here is we have this upload button at the bottom. And um, I'm going to sidetrack for a second here and go back over to our scenario steps. So we have um, creating the scenario we talk through, creating the new budgeting sheet. And then you know what? Yeah, we do have it in here. OK. Um, and then like this is talking about the grid that we talked about in all of these different options. It shows the regenerate here. It shows our upload. Here's a little note that gives you like what I was talking about where you want to make it the new expendable figure, not what you want the adjustment for. So that's your little reminder. And then this part talks about this upload option at the bottom. Okay. And what we have here is we have these, we have some report definitions. So basically what this option does is you can take these templates and upload them to your report library, to your report manager, and then it gives you ba the basic information that you would need in order to just start from there, enter in the amounts, and then upload that to the scenario. So what you're doing is you're kind of skipping this create step. You're doing that step through your report manager, and then you can upload it. And if we were to do this, And uh, go through here. I could choose a file upload and what it would do here. I'm not sure. Oops. Clicked the wrong button there.
I don't remember if this will give me a problem since I have these accounts in here, but uh, I just want to show you. I'm just pulling something in for like a quick example. Oh, I have a different one. Okay. Because I want to show you what it looks like on this grid real quick. So, um, so when I pull this in here, this one, actually, I, I named it transportation, but I pulled in a different spreadsheet. And what we can see, so one thing that you may notice here is that the regenerate option is not available. And that's because we didn't make it through the create option. So if you ever see one that doesn't have the regenerate option, that's a tip as to why. They probably use this upload option because they started with a sheet that they hadn't generated here and then uploaded to it. That's also a reason to make sure if we're doing like that process that we looked at where we downloaded and then uploaded to replace, make sure you use this upload and replace option if it is for that specific budgeting sheet that you've already made because that keeps this regenerate option in, intact. So just a tip there. Okay, let's delete the second up, the second one here. Delete the budgeting sheet, okay. Let's make sure we save this up. And then, okay. So now when we're looking at our budgeting sheet, the next step is to promote it. And when we're promoting it, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the, take the information we have from here, so our adjustments 2024, and we're going to push them over to our proposed amounts grid right here. Now, before we do that, I just want to go look at our proposed amounts grid. So this is what we're looking at. Now, um, in the example that we're talking about, we're saying, okay, we want to do some adjustments for 2024. If I were to go pick 2024 on this grid and just see everything that's in here for 2024, these, were, these are our original budgets. They may still be out here, whatever they posted as the initial budgets. And that's okay because now they've already been applied. You know, they already have their initial budgets that are over on the actual accounts. They're kind of just sitting here. They can sit here for reference. Um, but what's going to happen is as soon as I promote these accounts, it is going to overwrite both the proposed budgets and the proposed revenues in this grid for that for that year. As long as we're at a point where those have already been applied, like now we're in this we're in fiscal year 2024, so that's going to be totally fine. So let's go back. Let's promote this. Okay, adjustments 2024, and here's the message warning of that. Um when we'll talk about when we're looking at the next year budgets, we'll talk a little bit more about like what it means for them to be in that grid in that context. But in the context of adjustments, um, promotion is going to replace. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, okay. I see like a hand raised. Melissa, I'm not sure if you uh, meant to do that, but if you have a question, please let me know. Yeah, I do have a question. It's probably yeah. a dumb question, but I figured I'd raise my hand and ask it real quick. Um, I've always had this probably irrational fear that if I only put in like five budgets that I'm going to replace, mm -hmm. that it's going to replace all the other accounts with zeros because I didn't put them in there. So I assume that's a, that's not a thing. Yeah, no. And I get that too. And I know, especially when you're doing things like this and you're like promoting and, and, um, you know, applying and such. So what we're going to do, let's promote this. And um, we'll look at what this looks like in proposed amounts and I'll talk about that. So now we promoted, so where we're going is our proposed amounts. Now at this point in the process, so what we've done is we've pushed those from the scenario to the proposed grid. We haven't done anything that's actually touching like our actual budget accounts yet. Like right now, this is all kind of like our little working area, our reference area. So um, when we have this, fiscal year 24, um, we have this option to apply these. And so this is our next step. We come in here, we would do the adjustment um, and we'll talk about these options here. But basically when I apply, what it's gonna do is it's gonna go look at the amounts in this grid and it's gonna say, I have these three accounts. I'm gonna go update those three accounts for my budgets. 
Now, what I would say that you want to watch out for is say I had left all of those other ones in here with proposed amounts of zero, the amount was zero. If I applied those as adjustments, then it would go look at those accounts and add adjustments to get the expended to zero. So I definitely understand like the concern. Um, but especially when we're talking about the context of adjustments, I the key is making sure what's in your grid is what you want to actually be updating. Um, before we apply, no problem. Um, before we apply, the other thing we can do in here, so again, this is my little working area. So far, if I haven't applied, I haven't actually touched anything on these actual accounts. Um, so I have an opportunity here where I'm like, Oh, uh, 566. Actually, you know what? Let's, uh, that one needs to be 600. So I can update this. Honestly, in a case where I only had like three of these, like I could have actually just created them from here and picked my account and said 24. And I want to go ahead and save that. I can add more. Uh, the only thing you want to watch out for with this, and again, it's like very, very situational because if if I'm doing this, like in this case where I have four and I can easily see them, yeah, that's no problem. If I ever had a situation where I had to go back and then re-promote my scenario because I wanted to upload something, then it would overwrite any changes here. So, so personally, I like... um starting with the scenarios and then pushing them forward. And usually if you're gonna be using this like for adjustments, it's because you have more than four. Like four, you'd go in and probably just adjust the amounts. Um, or if there's one in here, say we need to delete, uh, we don't wanna adjust this one, you could just remove this out of here, delete that one um, before you move forward. So then, okay, so then our last step in this, and we're going through here, um, this talks about, you know, how you can actually edit those in the proposed amounts grid. And then here's where we're going to apply these. So when we're talking about this for a budget adjustment, uh, the very first thing, which I kind of sneaky to this is I picked the year 24. So that's what we're seeing in the grid. Uh, as we move forward with years, like there could be ones out here from previous years. So, you know, this filters your grid and it selects these. So uh, fiscal year 24, go ahead and apply. And I'm going to make sure I change this to adjustment. Update the gap original estimate estimate um, amounts. That's going to determine like when I enter this adjustment, is it going to enter like a gap adjustment? Um so that that would be calculated into like the gap original amount. Effective date. So this is where I'm going to put this in. So let's say like 2, 1, 24, because we're in February. So we're going to put an effective date. And then um, full year is more of like a reference field. We'll talk about that when we talk about the, um, when we talk about posting like the next year budgets. And what I do is go ahead and apply these here. This part takes a minute. Oh yeah, okay, we good. We only did a couple, so that was fine. And let's see, let me make sure I write one of these down. So we're gonna look at this middle one that was 600. Okay, so what we're seeing here, so this one, and I kind of, you know, we we just picked some random accounts when we were um, updating our spreadsheet. So this one didn't have an initial budget in. And so what this did is, again, I entered 600. So it said, what's the initial budget? The initial budget is zero. So the difference is 600. So it entered this adjustment here. And if I click on budgeting adjustments at the top, I can see adjustment created from proposed budget. 
So this really helps because that tells me that I posted it from those proposed amounts. It got applied from there instead of like a manual budget adjustment that was created from this page. So that is that is doing the um current year adjustment. Let's see. Okay. So let's go back. Let's rewind it back. Actually, let's go to our documentation page. We did pretty good. We're like halfway through 9:36. I'm I'm happy with this. Uh again, we're gonna kind of go through this. It's gonna be a very similar process. Hopefully that helps to see it a couple times. But I also have a couple more things to point out this time. All right. So I clicked on this other walkthrough. This is budgeting scenario steps for creating proposed amounts for the next fiscal year. And we kind of have, you know, here's our basic information at the top here. We're starting in the same place, starting in scenarios, click on creating a scenario. Um, it was wild. I was going through my notes and this is a training we give every year. So I was, you know, looking back and pulling through like, you know, here's what we did last year. And, you know, one of the things that I'm doing in my notes is updating all the years. And I got to tell you, like, I cannot believe we're about to talk about fiscal year 25. Like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, that's really like throwing me off here, but, but we are. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to click create again, right? <laughs> and we're going through similar steps. Now, this year, we want to say, let's say, um, and we don't really need to put 2025 because we also have this other field on our grid. Again, it's going to default to this, like 2025, since we're in 2024 right now, it's defaulting to 25, so I don't have to touch that this time. Now, the other thing, okay, so when we're talking just about, like, how you have these scenarios, like, why you might use these scenarios, I know I mentioned before, like, everything that you want to push forward for the year needs to be in the same scenario. So like I might have the budgeting sheets. Well, it's, it's easiest if it's in the same scenario, I guess I should say, because there are, I mean, there's different ways to use this. I know I, you know, have heard some districts that'll like make separate scenarios and kind of push them forward, but then you have to worry a lot more about the timing. So so yeah, it's not that you like 100% have to with some of these things, but um, but it's easiest to make sure you don't accidentally like overwrite something if you have all of the accounts for the year um, in a scenario. Yes, Andrew. Oh, I love this hand raising thing. <laughs> yeah, I figured that would be more polite than how I normally just start talking. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I'm going to try that out. Um, so I just wanted to say so that it's here, like we have districts that like they're, it's the county that's forcing them to do this. Like they have to push the revenue. They do two scenarios. Okay. They have to push the revenue all the way through first because they want the revenue like now, like okay. right now, you know, and then they can do the expenditures later. And it's just this one county. And I don't, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not a treasurer, so I'm not, you know. I, I'm not fully understanding why this county wants these things in this way. But that is the thing where you have to be careful, right? Where like, if you have any expenditures, if you do them separate, and maybe you'll hit on this when we hit that point. But if you do them separate, if you have like even one expenditure account mm -hmm. and you're trying to push the revenue through and propose, it'll grab that and say, oh, there's your expenditure budget. Right. Yeah. Like you kind of have to keep them totally. If you're going to do it, you can't like do all revenue and general fund for expenditures. It's like if you're going to do them separate, it needs to be all one and all the other. And you kind of like really we're really careful about it. Yeah. The key is that when I do that promote step that we saw when we were pushing everything from scenarios over to the proposed amounts, 
when mm-hmm. I do that step and I promote it, it's going to promote whatever's in that scenario over to proposed amounts. And what it's going to do is overwrite both the revenue and the expenditure pages okay. there because it's expecting, because it's accommodating for the fact that you can do both together. So when it pushes it over, it's replacing everything. So when you look at that proposed grid and they're like on separate tabs, like that's a visual thing, but everything on that page is actually on that page and would be overwritten with a scenario. So that's really the key is that, yeah. So if even if you were to like make a scenario that's just revenues, when you push that over, it's overwriting both sides. Okay. Okay. Well, that's, I mean, I think that's helpful to tell people is it's, it's at this place that it'll, it's kind of the most dangerous because we we've had we did have early on we had people trying to do a scenario for like every fund and pushing them over and we know that doesn't work right but it's just it's really it's a visual i can kind of even tell them i like the way you said that it's like it's just visual it's really one just giant area and so it's wiping it all out yeah because the thing is And when you think about the account code types, like, and this is why even when we're looking at like creating those budgeting sheets and you have the two options, the difference is that revenue account codes have different code pieces than the expenditure accounts, right? Like the revenues are much shorter because they have those different fields. They have a receipt code instead of a function code. And so that's really it. It's, it's, they're in those different grids because the accounts themselves are just different. And so they have to be, yeah, yeah, they have to be organized differently so it can show those codes correctly. Okay. That really helps. I was kind of thinking it was at the next place where you go from proposed to actual, that it was a bigger problem, but it's really the first step because it wipes it out and you can't even get to. Mm -hmm. We'll talk a little bit about it. Okay. Yeah, we'll talk a little bit more about it because like there is a case where like if you go through and you were to just do the revenues and then you were to apply those, they actually stay out there. Um, So we'll continue to talk about this as we- And that's what we do. That's what we, that's what they have to do is the, just the revenue. And I don't know if anybody else has that, but that it's just the revenues have to go all the way through first. Like, Mm -hmm. like I said, it's like the second week of July, I swear they post them all. I don't know. I, I, it's, it's, it's strange, but yeah. Yeah. I can see that. I can see that. Well, yeah, we'll keep talking about it. And that's what, and honestly, no, I'm glad that you chimed in though, because that's why when I said everything needs to be in a scenario, I kind of stopped myself because I'm like, I know that there are situations where not everyone does that. Um, so for the purpose of kind of talking about how this works um, and like when we promote everything over, there's a convenience in having everything in one scenario, but that certainly doesn't encompass like all situations. Okay. Now, um, but the other thing I want to talk about with this too. So, and Andrew made a good point. I have like seen it in the past where like, I know this can be a little confusing. Sometimes it's like, all right, I'm going to make a scenario for my general fund. I'm going to make a scenario for this fund. And like, because you need to promote everything together, that doesn't really work. So what the mentality here, how I think of it, it's you're going to make, here's my group, here's my budgets for this year. And then my budgeting sheets can be broken down into all my different funds so that I can get that created and then I can promote those all together. Now, the reason I might have multiple scenarios for the same year. So the example would be like, say, you know, there's like a potential levy. And so, you know, this scenario, this is what my budgets would be if I had this, um, you know, if I had this much to budget. And then I have another scenario, like if it doesn't pass or, um, you know, if there's like a different situation where it's like it would either be these budget amounts or these budget amounts. Um, But it could but still be like your full group of accounts. So that may be a case where you have multiple for the same year. Ultimately, then you're just promoting one of those. All right. So then we would go through and let's go ahead and create one of these. Um, again, we have our type up here. Now, I forget. Uh, I'm going to hope this doesn't take too long, but we're going to try and do a general fund one. Um, now, when we're looking at this, okay, let me get this a little bit bigger since we're zoomed in here. So our, we talked about our first tab being, here's what columns are going to be on that spreadsheet that we have, right? Right. Now we can update these if we want to say, 
we don't want say like we don't want the unencumbered we don't want the encumbrance on here one thing when you're looking for uh future years is you have this prior year expendable there also is an option down here for uh i'm sorry prior year expended and then two years prior expended three years prior expended so if you wanted to add those onto this sheet you could and then also like these can kind of be moved around however you want to order the columns and so this is pretty flexible um, with adding different information on here um, if needed. And then again, we'll do configure filters. Let's do uh, active again. Active equals true. I changed my mind. We're going to do the cafeteria. I, I don't think this will take that long, but I, you know, I don't want a chance. I want to end up sitting here. I Sometimes I like make these snap decisions and then I regret it if it's like, okay, this is going to take a while. <laughs> so we'll stick with the 006 fund. Um, and, you know, I, I'm doing these really simple filters. Like we did a function, we did a fund, but um, you can see there's a lot of other like options here as far as all of the different um, account code things. There's a filter. If you were to make a specific account filter, you could use that um, and just pull in, like say they have a filter already for like the athletic accounts. Um, they could use that on here. And let's go ahead and save this up. And so one thing I see, and so especially, you know, I, I know like year to year, there may be some similar groupings, right? So like you know, if they have um, their different buildings and they work with their, you know, building department heads to determine what their budgets are, um, it may be helpful, like say they do have a situation where they want a specific group of accounts and they could make an account filter, use that to make the budgeting sheet. They could also um, have that so that it's used on certain reports that that person would look at. And it's like kind of nice because you can start to set these things up in your software that uh, would kind of make different processes easy as well. So there's our budgeting sheet. And uh, we open this up here. This looks very similar to what, I mean, this is the same thing as we saw when we were looking at it with adjustments. Now this time it says 25. Cool, that's for our next year. We don't have to worry about that. Um, I want to talk real quick about this ID field. Because we get questions about this, and I know it looks kind of, you know, <laughs> looks like a lot of odd data in there. Um, so what this ID field is, by default, it's going to be in this sheet. Really, uh, what it does, it's kind of like just a little code that refers to whatever this account code is. And um, if you were to, say, like, download this sheet and then something gets deleted on the account code fields, then it could still be looked up by this ID. If you were to download this sheet and you had all of the fund function object, if you still had all of the account code pieces, technically, if you didn't have this ID, it could still find it. So it's kind of like a safeguard where it's like, this would re always refer to my account code uh, that, that was there, like if, if it's not there for some reason, or um, you know, if you have all the pieces and you're fine. One thing to watch out for, um, I have seen before where like, if this is pulled in here and then say like you change something on one of these account codes, um, like say we want to change this to like a different OPU or something, this ID is still tied to the original code. So like, if, if uh, basically there's not usually a situation where you're going through and actually like manually changing these, the times I've seen it is if somebody pulls it into Excel and then they use a filter on it and they're, cause they're kind of like, you know, uh, sorting it differently. They're like filtering it into different groups to update. And like maybe that ID didn't get filtered the same way. And so it's like attached to a different account than like what's now showing on that line. So that's just something to watch out for. Um, but that's kind of just like a safeguard to make sure that if there's any like um, change in like the data, it can still find the account that it that it's on that row for. 
Okay. So what we do here is we can go ahead and put in um, our amounts just to make it easy. I'm just going to pick this last column here. We'll carry this down a little bit. Boom. All right. And then we do accept. Let's do a save. Let's make sure we save that up. And from here, I can go ahead and continue creating sheets. Now, here's the thing. So we saved this. I'm going to close this up. Um, just to look back, let me see what I have in our 23. So I'm looking back at like a prior year now, right? I have this clone option. So say I were to, instead, because like I'm just looking at this like for an example, we're creating a brand new one, right? But as um, you go in future years, like if you set one of these scenarios up, it may make a lot more sense to just go and clone a prior year so that you're not going in and like doing this, create a budgeting sheet, you know, picking the columns again, uh, adding the filters again. Like if you did all of that in a previous year, then you could just go ahead and clone the sheet. Now, this one, I had quite a few sheets in here, so it's taking a while. But if I did this, like I could go ahead, come in here, let it go, and um, I could always work in another tab while that's happening, and it's going to go through and create these sheets. Now, um, one key, and we'll see it when this one pops up. I don't remember if this one, uh, how this one was created. Um, but one key here is I was talking about that regenerate option. Here we go. Okay, so so say I clone this and then fiscal year, I wanna put in 25. Now, so see, we can see here that I have these regenerates on here because these sheets were all originally from 23. Let's save this real quick, just to make sure we don't lose it. And then let's edit this. Let's look at these real quick. Okay, so we had cafe fun. So this was just a copy of our scenario um, from the prior year. So it is putting our 25 on here, which is great because it's going by the current fiscal year and it created it. But if I had, so I had these like, you know, it pulled the accounts that met whatever parameters at that time. But maybe I have like inactivated accounts since then. I might have created different accounts since then. Like this one I cloned from 23. So there might have been some difference since last year when I actually created these sheets. So what I can do is I can come in here and regenerate it. And like if it has the same parameters, I can just come in here, um, regenerate and save it. And um, that can be really helpful for moving forward into future years. So one thing that I've found um, with looking at these year to year is that, you know, this is great. However, one thing we discussed is like there's an alternate, you know, option where you can upload, you can get these sheets and put them in your report manager and then use the upload option for those. Just keep in mind, those aren't going to have the regenerate when cloning. Now, this totally just depends on what like the district's process is, right? Because they would still be able to go run that from their report manager, make a new spreadsheet that way, and then and then upload them, you know, into a new scenario. So it really just kind of depends on what works for um each district as far as what they're doing. But I do see a benefit. Like I wanted to show this because I do see a benefit where like it's kind of nice if you do go through and create them from here. And then you have them in a future year to just regenerate, download, enter your amounts. Yes. Okay. So I understand that if you, like, there's the option where you never create them in the scenario. Like there's a report manager report. They just straight download from that and upload. And that's not going to work for this. If they... For regenerating. For regenerating. Like it'll work in every other way. It just won't work to regenerate. Exactly. Mm -hmm. They'd have to go pull a new one. Yeah, because what the regenerate is going to do is it's going to give you that view that's like the create option, right? So like if it never yeah. 
never existed for those sheets, then like there's no way to like redo something that wasn't done in the first place, right? So that's the reason for it. Mm -hmm. But if you created it in here as a sheet, mm -hmm. then downloaded it, then uploaded it back in here, you mm -hmm. could regenerate that? Yes. Okay, so it's not really so because, and I think we got confused on this last year. It's not that the spreadsheet is per se the problem, because I think most of ours do like that. But if they created it in here, downloaded, uploaded, the regenerate would work. It's if they go out to the report manager and mm -hmm. use that spreadsheet option. Right. Or if they, so say they downloaded it like this, mm -hmm. when they upload it, they need to use this upload option. Like if they download it here and then they use the upload on the bottom. So it's like, it'll create. Oh, that bottom. might've been an issue we had. That's really good. I okay. I've seen that happen before. Yeah. Because, because basically when they're uploading it back to this, it's still connecting it. Like with that's the line, this is where it's coming from. It can be regenerated, you know, but if they upload from the bottom, it's going to make a new line and that doesn't connect it to like what the parameters were for creating it. Awesome. That really answers my question. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. That's really one I wanted to touch on um, with like showing this because I think like, you know, and um, especially with like having this upload option, like I know that a lot of districts are very comfortable with their spreadsheets. So we made this option available. And, you know, again, it's just like one of those things where there's different ways to do things. Another thing with the upload option at the bottom that was nice is like, back when people were still migrating from classic like the classic report could be pulled over with the uploads like if they had already done their budgets in classic and they needed to get them over because of like their migration timing um this was used so it was a solution for that but i think as we've gone on with years you know now moving past classic and now looking at like okay budgeting people have been cloning for a couple of years now um, I really see how useful this regeneration tool is on the new year. So I think too, I mean, I know that going through this create option, if they have a lot of these, that can take some work uh, the first year they do it, but it can be a huge benefit then when they're cloning these later on. So it could definitely be worth it. Okay. So, um, so now we have a couple different scenarios. Um, let's look at our grid real quick. I'm, uh, I see I'm getting close on time here. I'll probably be a little bit over, but I'll try not to keep you too long. Um, so I can filter this down to 2025 and I see my two scenarios here. Let's promote just our original one. Um, I didn't have anything in my proposed amounts for 2025. Let's get that promoted. Okay. All right, so we can see now we have our amounts here. And, and again, like this is where, so now we have the 2024 ones we pushed over, the 2025 ones. So our drop down gives us the option um, for either 24 or 25. So I'm just going to pick that. And same thing, we could come in here, we could, you know, edit these if we wanted to, uh, we could delete ones out of here. I think that at this point, it's a little bit riskier if I were to come in here and start editing these amounts, because you probably have a lot more in this grid now. You would have the proposed budgets. If you had revenue budgeting sheets in your scenario, those would be in here as well. And if you needed to change something back at the scenario and then push it forward, any changes that you make in this grid would be like overwritten with whatever's in the scenario. So it's kind of, I, I feel like the safe way is to just update any changes in the scenario and then like re-promote it over. And you could do that as many times as you needed to. So like, say, you know, they're in the budgeting stage at this point, you're like getting the budget started in the scenario and then um, talking to the different, um, you know, departments to get their budgets in. Someone come, comes back and says, hey, we want to change something. Like they could always change that in the scenario, go ahead, re-promote it. And then this would just repopulate in here. So the important thing at this step, 
is now that it's in the proposed amounts, um, I mentioned earlier that we are just, this is our working area. Like we still, uh, well, with the adjustments we have, but as far as our next year budgets, we haven't actually pushed anything to the accounts themselves yet. Like we have not posted an initial budget yet. Uh, so let me grab one of these accounts because I want to look at what this does do. Let's open another tab here. going to our accounts okay so when I look at my account like like all of this information is going to be based on my current uh period. So my current period is February 2024. I'm looking at I'm looking at um future updates for 2025. So that really doesn't update any of my initial budget or anything. But what it does do is this next year proposed field. So next year proposed shows this amount. That's the amount from my my proposed amount grid, okay? So whatever is in here is going to directly impact what's showing here. And then this is the amount that like they want to populate um, ahead of time, probably because this would be helpful for like future year requisitions, future year POs. Um, you know, this is really why they may want to have the next year proposed out there so they can start doing those future year transactions. This right here is directly tied to what's in this grid and this is why it becomes important of like not wanting to overwrite the amounts in the proposed grid because if i were to go ahead and delete these out of here i probably have to do some page refreshing but let me delete that and then i have to go look this one up again And now it's zero. So this is, the, this is the account. I deleted that record out of the proposed amount grid. And now there's no next year proposed. So we'll, we'll talk about the applying in a minute. The applying is what actually like sets the initial budgets for next year. But the proposed amounts grid is what's going to right now in this time period where we're still in 2024. We're just looking at 25. There is that next year proposed that needs to be there. So that's what to think about when, you know, that's where it becomes like a little bit difficult if they try and do multiple scenarios, because if you ran through like one set of budgets and then applied them and then ran through like another fund, promoted them and then applied them, like you only have a fraction of that information in the proposed at a time. So keeping everything in one scenario allows you to have everything within the proposed amounts so that it can show as this next year proposed. So that's really the key. It's it's all comes down to this field here. Now, that's also the reason why when we did adjustments, it didn't matter that we rewrote them because we were looking at 2024. 2024, they have no need, like next year proposed doesn't matter for 2024 anymore because we're already in 2024. So this field, so it's specifically relevant when you are in the fiscal year prior to the one you're budgeting for. I know that can be a little confusing, so I hope I <laughs> spit all out, set all that out okay. <laughs> um, all right, so then, so now we have our amounts here, just having them in this grid is what's gonna show them on the um, next year proposed. But in order to actually apply them as like initial budgets, we have to do one more step and that's apply. What this is gonna do when I do this, yeah, I have permanent or temporary, we'll talk about that, is it'll have this effective date and that's gonna be the first day of the new fiscal year. 
So what this step does is it goes and stamps them out there in July so that, and if we did this now, we wouldn't really see a difference in the current year. But if we went and opened, if we went and switched our period to July, then our initial budgets would be there. So essentially this apply step is like pre-setting them for July 1st. Once you apply them, like in order to have that next year proposed, still got to have them in the grid. Nothing changes with that. But this is really just the step that actually like presets them for the next year. Now we have a couple options. So for types, we have temporary or permanent. Uh, part of this is a reference thing. Um, you can uh, We have like certain reports where you can kind of see with temporary or permanent budgets. The key is really, so temporary, that may be like the initial wave of like posting, posting them to July 1st. Like you may post as temporary. And then say changes happen. Uh, you know, they've they've got some budgets out there just because they want to have something, you know, out there for people to start making their New Year transactions. But uh, they actually go through and get their permanent appropriations um, approved, and then they need to push those over. Permanent can always um, can always overwrite temporary. So if you've already posted as temporary and then you post permanent, it'll just overwrite what those budgets were, like for the initial budget. Permanent can also overwrite permanent. <laughs> so, you know, like if you post a permanent budget, like, and then something needs to change with your initial, like you still have an option to overwrite that. Uh, basically, the only scenario is like, you can't post permanent. And then if you post temporary afterwards, a temporary is not going to overwrite a permanent. Uh, update the original gap estimate amounts. So we have our account here. So uh, we have our gap original budget. Um, let's look at this one. So you have like a gap initial. And uh, so when you post that uh, for the first time, it'll have this amount. And then, you know, as you're posting, you can choose to um, update that. I wish they would default to temporary instead of permanent because districts are click happy. Yeah, I get that. I get that. But that, and that's why I mentioned though, if they do post as permanent, like, and they need to do it again, they can totally just do it as permanent again. And that's okay. You know, uh, there is a report I have in my notes here. Let me see where it is. Um, We'll, we'll look at it in a second because I forget what it's called off the top of my head. But there is a report that can kind of help you look at the uh, look at the different um, entries for like temporary and permanence. The effective date, uh, again, that's going to default to July 1. And that's really putting it out there so that when they switch over to the new year, it's there as of the first day. And then full year. So if you're doing temporary, I believe this is when you can uncheck full year. This, um, I believe, is just like a reference field. Um, yeah, full year is checked. Full year indicates whether or not um, it's like intended to be the full year budget or like, you know, temporary. You may not have that checked. And um, we have that. I have this on this report definition I'm going to talk about as well. So, uh, so yeah, so what I would do is go ahead and apply these. This, this does, um, I believe, take a minute too. So I don't think I'm actually going to apply these based on our time. But uh, that last step to apply can be taken. And then that's going to put them out there for the new year. Now, here's the, here's the last thing I want to mention as far as, you know, kind of what we were talking about with worrying about them getting overwritten and things like that. Once I apply these, if I applied these as permanent, like even if I promoted another scenario to this grid, whatever I, I applied is still going to stay applied. So like um, with what Andrew was talking about, so if I ran a scenario with just my revenues and I promoted my revenues to my, to my um, proposed amounts grid and then I applied those as of July 1st, those would be out there for July 1st. Um, and then say I promoted a scenario with my budgets and it doesn't have my revenues in it. 
that's going to overwrite them in this grid for the proposed amounts. They're still going to be posted as of July 1st, though. Like, it's not going to erase that part. Like, the main thing when you're promoting a new scenario and it takes it out of this grid is simply that next year proposed. Because of that, if, like, like timing's a big factor here. Like, we're talking about this a lot because, you know, we're in February right now. The next couple months, they're going to be working on this budgeting. Once it's actually July, like once they're actually in fiscal year 25, the whole concern with this proposed amounts grid is like not nearly as important because, again, this is for the next year proposed. So like once they're in that fiscal year, if they need to run a quick scenario to update their grants, they can do that. And there's not that same like concern of overwriting next year proposed amounts or like erasing next year proposed amounts. So just some things to think about there. Okay, let me show, uh, it's in the reports library, I believe. Um, this budget transactions, initial estimates, and then there's one for revenues. So this report um, is one that we have out here in the shared library um, that can be helpful if you're looking at like temporary uh, temporaries versus permanents. So here's kind of the example of what it looks like. It has this type here. And so you can see like a temporary budget. Um, if it just says initial, then that would be like a permanent budget, full year. And then replaced kind of shows you like if there was a temporary and then a permanent was posted and replaced it, then um, you can see it on this report. So if you're looking for something like if there's a case where like either you're trying to like look at budgets like something that happened with um, your district or if they want to see this, this can be helpful and they can grab the definition right from here and put it in their report manager. Can you apply permanent on top of permanent? Um, but that won't show on this report. Yes. So you can apply permanent on top of permanent. I believe on this report, it'll just still, it'll just show the most recent one because this is kind of tracking, um, this is pulling from like the budget transaction op ob object, sorry, <laughs> um, which it actually like does replace it uh, when it's permanent on top of permanent. So it only has like the one thing to pull for this report. Okay, and then um, again, like just to go back to our uh, little walkthrough here is this kind of, you know, also talks through the things we talked through. We have um, a little bit more description too on what I talked through with like temporary and permanent. And, oh, and it even has the reference to the reports library here. So I'll make sure that link is working because <laughs> I know we've switched over some things. But all right. Well, thank you so much. I know we went over. Thanks for sticking around. Um, if there are any more questions, definitely let me know. Raise your hand or uh, let me know. But um, thank you so much for coming today. And uh, we'll have this recording posted. I hope everyone has a great weekend. Thank you.